Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Hello and welcome to the Midweek Takeaway. Today we're joined by Oliver Friesen, CEO of Golden Metal Resources. Welcome back, Oliver. Gents, how are we doing? Yeah, good. You Did, did you uh, have a good, good Easter? Uh, I did. I mean, I was working the whole time, but yeah, I had a, a nice turkey dinner and yeah, so no complaints. Excellent, excellent. So um, obviously you just recently announced significant findings from a ground magnetic geophysics survey at the Garfield Project in Nevada's Walker Lane Mineral Belt. The survey identified three major magnetic anomalies correlating with high-grade copper, gold and silver mineralization in both the power line and high-grade zones. These results, along with a robust geochemical presence of copper in the soil, suggest potential underlying copper porphyry systems. Golden Metals has now commissioned further 3D magnetic inversions to better understand these targets, reflecting positively on the project's potential. With ongoing drilling preparations at the flagship Pilot Mountain project and the high demand for domestic metal sources like tungsten, 2024 is set to be a pivotal year for Golden Metals. The company anticipates further significant developments. And I saw you make the statement today on, on X uh, where you stated, and I quote, most important news from Garfield yet, in my opinion. So just talk us through those uh, those results and your findings at Garfield, please, Oliver. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that statement I made, the, the sort of the backstory there is I've, I've been focused almost my most of my career on, on porphyry deposits. I've spent the first 10 years really in the field making grassroots porphyry discoveries, understanding them, doing mag surveys, doing rock sampling surveys, geochemical surveys, analyzing those results, and then moving on to drilling. So I've seen this process. I've been through this process multiple times. Actually, I think tweeted out a video or a few notes about a previous porphyry discovery that I was involved with, including photos of me with the, you know, the magnetic survey going and uncovering the porphyry rock. So it's it's not like this is foreign exploration for me. This is this is my bread and butter, really. So as we're moving this along and, and kind of adding the next steps, you know, I've uh, there's a playbook and I know what we need to see in order for this to continue to, to, to prove up and continue to look interesting. So for Garfield, it's the most important set of results. I, I, I very much stand by it, by that because go, moving from, hey, we have really high grade copper, gold, silver at surface to there's anomalies which correlate to those surface expressions at depth. That is a huge step because when you have something in a surface, you have no idea what's at depth until you start to model it and start to really understand it. A lot of times you'll do a magnetic survey and find out it's just some high grade wispy thing. It's a structure that brought a bit of fluid up and there's nothing of size or potentially of size there. So when we undertook this survey, we don't know what we're going to find. We potentially could have not found a magnetic anomaly associated with these areas and it would just tell us that there's something very small and, and not worth our time. However, we have not found that. We have found what I would consider to be the exact opposite, which is very strong, sizable, robust magnetic anomalies, almost perfectly coincident with the copper in soil and copper in rock results, which is exactly what we wanted to find. Oh, and- you need a few more adjectives in that. Can you, can you throw <laughs> a few more adjectives in about how, uh, how positive you think this is? <laughs> I, I got a whole long list here, but no, it, it, it's enormous, <laughs> enormous, very big. No, so no, well, Oliver, so so basically, just talk through the, the listeners as to what how you prove this up. So initially, you, you looked at the copper in the soil, and then you've now done these magnetic surveys. So, is that pretty much confirming? How confident are you that you've got this porphyry system there now running through there? So. Our confidence is growing. Obviously, we won't know if it's an actual copper porphyry at depth until we we go and drill it. That's a very important step. But everything we've done at surface to date has proven that there is porphyry alteration and mineralization, which is why we first thought, hey, there could be a porphyry here. The important thing is these porphyries, when they in they're they're, they're intrusions, right? So they're they're intrusive rocks. They intrude through the subsurface and then they solidify, and they contain magnetic minerals as opposed to the rocks that they've intruded into. So they show up as magnetic highs in the data. Now, I really encourage everyone, I put out, I think it was a video or a photo on my Twitter of a porphyry discovery I was directly involved with, and I show the magnetic anomaly associated with that with that discovery. So that's why these magnetic anomalies matter, because they're, they're telling you that there's something anomalous at depth that's magnetic, yeah, And the great thing is, and the most important takeaway for all the listeners right now is that those 
anomalies are almost perfectly coincident with where we're seeing all of our corporate surface. That's the big key takeaway here and why we're so excited. So if it's magnetic, what else could it be other than copper, silver, and gold? What? I mean, obviously gold is not magnetic, I, I think. Is, is that right? Correct. I mean, it, it there's a lot of magnetic rocks. So it, it could be a, a, a host of different magnetic rocks. But the thing that, that separates this from just another magnetic anomaly is the fact that directly above them we're seeing our perfect copper in the soil and and we're seeing you know four three two five percent copper right above these anomalies with very characteristic porphyry type ultra so have you seen have you seen the shawshank redemption movie where the guy comes out and empties his pockets onto the ground after after putting the hole in the wall so is it possible that somebody's deposited some copper on the ground or has it has to have come from <laughs> no. below I mean, no, because the, the reality is it just, and that just really highlights the size of the anomalies that we found. And especially at high grade zone, we're talking with a multi-kilometer scale soil and rock anomaly with copper. So it's very, very large anomaly. And now we have these fantastic magnetic anomalies, which underpin those, those anomalies at surface. And I mean, uh, when you talk about at depth, what, what depth are we talking about in terms of the porphyry? So that's the next question is what, so we know that these anomalies are at depth. They're not at surface. The next question is what do they look like in 3D space and how deep are they? Now, based on the strength of these anomalies, we do not believe that they will be very deep. We're not talking about four or 500 meters. We believe they will be shallower than that. But that is, that is the perfect question to ask, Kevin. And the exact question that I asked was, okay, we have the 2D anomalies. Now let's see what these look like in 3D space because you need a 3D anomaly in order to actually start proving up drill targets. So that's what we're doing now. We've immediately, as soon as I saw this on the same Zoom call, I said, okay, inversions, like start them right now. And that was that was only a few days ago. So he's going to get working on those. He understands the importance of what we have found here in terms of the magnetic anomalies in the 2D space. So the 3D inversions will then tell us what these look like in a three-dimensional space, which is the next really important. How do those inversions work? Are they, are they generated off the 2D and modeling, like AI modeling? I mean, how, can you just talk us through roughly in, in layman's terms how that works? It's it's quite complicated. It's a very complicated geophysical mathematical model. But what they do is based on the strength of the anomalies and the delta in the change as they walk across the surface, then they're then able to take that, plug it into a model, and it generates a 3D inversion of those results it's very complicated i'm not smart enough to understand it myself but i i know the results for these inversions can be really powerful and a really important next step so if i was to draw a circle of let's say 10 15 kilometers around garfield does this exist anywhere else in nevada blue spot yes i mean there's there's multiple copper porphyries in nevada pumpkin hollow is a, a very big copper porphyry northeast of us not too far down the road it's i don't know the exact distance but it's it's in the same belt and that's the key thing is when you're looking for these porphyries it's all about the belt these belts stretch for hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of kilometers and i remember the first few years of my career that was very much ingrained in me is as long as you're in the porphyry belt you can find these porphyry deposits anywhere within that belt so we're within this very clear northwest southeast trending belt where there are other copper porphyry discoveries, which is exactly why we have further confidence in what we're doing here at Garfield. So geologically, this belt is is like a fault in the earth, is it, where the intrusion has come up and, and then laid down in a metallic footprint? Yeah. So the the, the belt is the way to describe it is, and you know, it's it's very much a geological question, but subduction zones slam different oceanic and continental crust items in a parallel fashion. It, effectively, as these big belts or these big kind of swaths of rock get sandwiched together those are the belts where you can then find these porphyries because they kind of poke up through this certain kind of geological fabric if that makes sense okay so from the point of view of the rns you you were also mentioning sort of details there about uh, island mountain at the bottom as well i also noted your tweets saying that the the original analysis on Pilot Mountain was done on, I think the price of copper was 60% less than it is now, and the price of silver was 100% less than it is now. Now, I, I'm actually quite excited about silver. I don't know about you, but in terms of, in terms of metal, because I think 
I think we could see an exponential price increase in silver. I mean, they always talk about like gold being, you know, steady eddy, but gold could go mental, or sorry, silver could go mental. So tell us a little bit about what the RNS said about about Pilot Mountain and anything else you can add in terms of Pilot Mountain. Yeah, so I mean, the, the great thing just to note is the fact that this is, you know, a secondary asset in our portfolio. You know, we're not a one-trick pony. We have Pilot Mountain as our flagship, and there's so much going on there to be excited about. So, yeah, so what we're doing at Pilot is, and we've announced as previously, is we're pushing forward with the company's first ever drilling campaign. We've signed a drilling contract. We expect the permits from the BLM imminently now. So really any day now, and once those come through, we'll make sure to announce that. So all these important steps to get get finalized before you start a program are, are really coming together here. So we'll have some further announcements quite quite soon here announcing what we're going to be drilling, how many meters, start date, but everything's moving very quickly and, and we're getting quite close to uh, a start date here. So that's really exciting because we've done a lot of important work here. We have the largest undeveloped tungsten deposit in the ground right now, but there's scope to really materially increase that. And as you mentioned, Kevin, I mean, silver has me super excited too. And, and the reason I tweeted that is because one of the really important byproduct metals at Pilot Mountain is silver. We have silver, copper, and zinc that go alongside the tungsten. And it's not like we have a, a small amount of silver. You know, we have multi-million ounces of silver proven in the ground right now. So I know metal prices go up and, you know, investors will go, okay, well, you're not mining right now. It's, you have a couple of things in service. No, no, we have, you know, we have multi-million ounces. I believe it's 6.6 .6 million ounces. And please go to my Twitter just to double check that number, but it's about 6.6 .6 million ounces of silver proven in the ground right now. And the reason I put that out is, you know, the value of that metal has doubled since our, you know, the original MRE was published in 2018. That is, that is material. That is significant, especially to, to gold and metal. So, yeah, Pilot Mountain moving forward very quickly. It's also just worth noting in the RNS, we highlighted that we actually have done a magnetic survey pilot as well. With the success of the results that we've achieved at Garfield, there's a really important porphyry target at Pilot Mountain as well. So we said, let's go get the crews that are on site right now. We've already paid to mobilize them. Go run some lines over Pilot. Let's get a lot better definition over our porphyry target there. So we're just working through those results now, looking to get a much better definition over the porphyry target there. So a lot of stuff going on in the background. It's a really busy time. And obviously with copper, silver, gold, all these metals, really a lot of them approaching all-time highs. It's a really exciting time for gold and metal. I think in the broader sector as well. Yeah. So your specified amount of silver of 6.6 .6 million ounces defined in the ground is worth 184.8 million US dollars at current market price. Now, obviously, you've got to bring it out the ground, of huge number amounts of costs, et cetera, et cetera. So in no way, shape or form, are we talking about 185 roughly million pounds value to gold and meth. But your current market cap is 13.2 million pounds. Yeah. So, so, so I suppose the question I would ask is, you know, if someone came and offered you, let's say, twice that twenty-six million pounds now, and said, you know, good job, Oliver, off you go, you go on to the next thing, would would you even consider it? The short answer is no. Obviously, you know, like you said, the the value of the silver—that's just the silver in the ground. I mean, talk about the copper, the zinc, the tungsten, which is the most valuable. The garnet that we're working through as well. You know, what really has us excited here is is the upcoming drilling at Pilot Mountain, right? We we have something very material in the ground right now, but there is a huge expiration story here as well, and also looking for that porphyry. So, I I would not do anything until we start to get some holes into the ground at Pilot Mountain, because very quickly we could know how much we can grow this thing. I mean, what we have right now is so valuable. And if we didn't find another single ounce, we still have something that's material. And as you know, we've discussed the, the government conversations and, and potential non delegative funding. That's if we didn't drill another hole. But we can go, we have the opportunity to go in there now, drill some exploration holes, look to materially increase that that resource. Um, so a lot of lot of exciting things going on here. So yeah, no, I mean, it's just there's too much going on right now. The criticality of tungsten is all time highs right now. So there's just so many things working you know, that are making things really exciting here for gold and metal. And I, I'm really thrilled. Yeah, there's all sorts of things in terms of the tungsten, isn't it? I mean, you've got, uh, I think I think I read something about the fact the fact that the tungsten is possibly required for, for all of this computing capacity as well in terms of the AI. It's also the fusion technology that people are trying to talk about, never mind the fact that the world is trying to destroy itself through, uh, through defense. Obviously, tungsten helps. So, 
you know, you've got many, many facets in terms of where, where this is going. And yes, the elephant in the room, which you just mentioned, which is non-dilutive funding. You've also got the warrants coming in. So from a cash position, I'm presuming that uh, you're actually sitting very pretty after the last raise and, uh, and that warrant money basically coming in now steadily over the next few weeks and months. Yeah, no, we're in, we're in a great spot now. You know, it's it's been fantastic to have the share price where it is. You know, we we put a lot of work into getting it where it is, and and the warrant money coming in just makes makes it so we can just do a lot more work, and we can we can add a lot more value at Garfield, yeah, at Kyle Mount, cool. and the other assets. So, so that's been a huge bonus. We also did the the strategic raise as well as you mentioned, add a premium to the to the share price at the time. So that further bolsters the cash position. So there's so much we can do here and now with that money in hand and all the preparatory work we've done. You know, we think we can we can really add a lot of value with that money by spending it on you know really methodical exploration in the ground in Nevada. So it's a really exciting time. Just on tungsten, you know, it, it really is one of the metals of the future. You know, when it comes to things like nuclear fusion, that's that's the use case that has me the most excited is nuclear fusion, no doubt. You know, it's it's a very sad reality of the situation regarding geopolitical tensions where they are. No no one is it's happy to see that. The reality is tungsten is used in defense. There's no, you know, no one's skirting around that fact that certainly is is a metal and what it's used for. And the DOD is looking for a secure domestic supply for the reasons as, as anyone could probably understand. And that's just a reality of the situation is very sad. But, you know, lo- longer term outlook here is it's the fusion. It's 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 the use case in all these different green technologies that really has us excited. And it's the reason why we really want to push this project forward is, is being a part of something like nuclear fusion in the future and all these kind of green technologies. That's what really gets us excited and out of bed in the morning. And I suppose the the question is obviously this RNS was was about Garfield, okay, and the fact that we found these magnetic anomalies, and um, yeah, somebody's dropped some copper on the top, so who, who knows where that's come from? But we have a pretty good idea. The scenario is if, from your experience of Orphy Systems, if Garfield was the main asset, the gold and metal resources held at the minute, would you be a happy man? Absolutely. I think I think with each successive work program, it's very clear this could be a standalone asset. I mean, a lot of companies out there, I look at their portfolios, I shouldn't say too much, but it's an asset that that would be prized and, and could be a standalone and one that they're pushing forward. I mean, we need to, it needs to be drilled. That's obviously the biggest thing. We have anomalies. That's great. You know, there's no skirting around the fact that it needs to be drilled and proven up, but all this kind of the signs and the various data sets point to something potentially quite exciting. So yeah, it's like you said, it's, it's, it's a standalone for a lot of companies right now, especially in this market where copper is hard to find. There's not many companies with good copper projects. And and when they do find them, uh, the majors come very quickly and, and try to get that off your hands. So it's copper is a metal that everyone agrees on is something that we need way more of in the future. And there's very little of it being found right now, which also makes Garfield that much more special. And when you talk about world class, because I think you did say like this could be, you know, a big or free system just because of the the meters involved and how, how big it is. I mean, what what sort of you know numbers of of hundreds of thousands of tons of copper is a porphyry system normally? I mean, you know, if you if you took the other porphyry systems in Nevada, if you like, and, and I just want people to have a grasp of the the size potential. We're not saying that's what's going to happen in Garfield, but what what are we talking about? Are we talking about a million tons of copper? Are we talking about four hundred thousand tons of copper? What, what what could we be talking? about? <laughs> I mean, they, they they obviously range quite a bit. When you're looking for porphyries, they're typically larger tonnage and lower grade than, say, some of your other type of classic uh, copper deposits. If you Google largest copper deposits in the world, you'll get a list of the top 10 deposits. I, I haven't looked at the list as of this year, but I, I would venture that at least five or six of those deposits are porphyries, if not more. You know, when you look at the big, big copper deposits in Chile, Argentina, through the U.S., they're, they're porphyries. I mean, Bingham Canyon, Canyon is, I think, the deepest mine in the world. It's not too far away in Utah. That's a copper porphyry. That That's the size we're talking about here. It's not, you know, the, the big ones get their billions of tons, you know, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7, 1% copper equivalent. So th- that's why these prizes can be so big. It is you look at the biggest deposits in the world of copper, and most of them are going to be porphyries. So that's that's the I'm not saying that's what in any way you know alluded to that's what we're going to find here, but that's potentially what the size of the prize is when you're looking for these things, and they range. And even a lot of them in the middle of the road and lower end of the road are still very very exciting deposits, and a lot of them are in production today. So they're great deposits. I the geology is fantastic. I love working on them. 
And I, I'm really excited to have one in the portfolio here at Golden and, and be pushing it forward and continuing to deliver some exciting results from it. So you've got the Escondida mine, which is the biggest in the world. Escondida. Yeah, that, that's Escondida. Yeah. Colohuasi Colo mine in Chile. Yeah. Porfiri. Porfiri. Yeah. El Tonito mine in Chile. Where's that one? Yeah, Porfiri. Chile. Porfiri. Cerro Verde mine, Freeport Macaran, owned by Freeport Macaran, Peru. Porfiri. Yeah. Porfiri, yeah. Morancini mine. Service mine situated in Arizona, United States. So I freaked yeah. out. Yeah. Are you are you are you listing top to bottom right now? This is top to bottom. So yeah, so those, those are all free. There you go. They're all poor. Grasper Block Cave Mine. Yeah. In uh, Grasp- Papi, Papi, Indonesia. Poor free. Yeah. Poor free. Yeah. Kikamata Mine. Shukamata yeah. Mine in, in Chile. Poor free. Yeah. Cobri Panama Project. Yeah. Poor free. Poor free. Kamakakula Project. That's. Underground. That's not a porphyry. Republic of Congo. That's that's not a porphyry. And interestingly, that's on the border. That's on the border of uh, Northwest Zambia because it's in the DRC. So uh, yeah. we're we're off there in uh, ten days' time. To, oh, right on. Just right on. And then the tenth one is Benavista del Cuba, which is in Mexico. Brown oil mine produced an estimated three hundred thirty-one thousand tons of copper. I think that's a. I think that's a porphyry. Either way. Eight or so nine of the top eight ten. Eight or nine of the top ten are poor freeze. Yeah. These guys are producing, you know, I mean, the top one is producing a million tons of copper in, uh, in 2022. It's so, incredible. I mean, incredible. I mean, we're dreaming. Yeah, right, you know, I mean, I think Pumpkin Hollow, you mentioned earlier on, has got like a combined production of something like 150,000 tons a year. So even to get somewhere near that figure would be mind blowing, wouldn't it? Totally. Totally. I mean, there's a huge range, and even the ones, like I said, middle of the range, there, there's, I could name 10 porphyries in BC that aren't on that list that are being mined very profitably. Yeah. So there's a huge range. Yeah. Obviously, the big ones are the huge prizes, and they're very, very rare to find, but anything even middle of the road or, or lower end of the road is can be very profitable and exciting, so just talk, just especially when copper is hard to find. So, so just talk us through the next steps, Oliver, then. So obviously, we talked about this inversion, maybe, you know, hopefully coming out, it's on Pilot Magic. So just talk us through what sort of listeners and shareholders can look forward to in the coming months. Yeah. Okay. So the next kind of things to look out for, as we've mentioned, the permits for Pilot Mountain, that is the next big step expected. Those, uh, those are expected imminently. So what we'll do is we'll announce those. And then we're also finalizing preparations for the program. So we'll announce how many meters, where we're going to be drilling, start date. We'll give you some more details about what that program is going to look like. I can assure everyone that my day right now is pretty much filled up with preparations for that program i'm going to head out to site as well so you'll see some videos and photos of me on site and core coming out of the ground and all that really fun stuff the geophysics pilot mountain uh we've done the ground magnetics so we're just working through those results right now we'll also do the inversions of that result as well so you'll see the magnetic results we'll have inversions from pilot mountain and then on garfield the inversions is the next big step those are in progress right now then we'll announce what those look like. And then I, I can't comment on what the stage after that is at Garfield. We need to see the inversion results. I need to see those first. Uh, and then following that, we'll announce what the next steps could be. But we're looking to have some sort of 3D targeting now, which gets us closer to, hey, let's let's go and drill this thing, which is really exciting. And the other thing yeah. just to note about Garfield and people are going, is it, are we drilling it now? Like I said, I need to see the inversion results. The other thing is, I mean, we're going to be drilling literally down the road very shortly here at, at, at Pilot Mountain. So to run two drill programs at one time, it's doable, but it's, I might not sleep for four months. Which well, anyway, do you, Oliver, from the amount of work you talk about? So nothing new. Uh, well, no, I mean, it, if, if drilling two would be, that's, that's all. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's just, you know, it's about making sure that we kind of balance the portfolio and push things forward in a way that is just sensible for the business. So I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not ruling it out. We need to get the inversions and then we'll go from there and figure out what the next steps are going to be. But I think the lot, the takeaway from that is if things are active, things are busy, copper is doing really well, gold is doing really well, silver is doing really well. I mean, the timing's great and it's going to be a really exciting summer here at gold and metal. No <laughs> doubt about that. Yeah, and a fifty thousand ton per annum bore for a year with a fifty percent margin is two hundred and twenty five million dollars, and that that's basically fifty percent margin as in it costs you fifty percent to get stuff out of the ground. You know that wouldn't be in the top fifty probably core frees if in in the world because ultimately the biggest ones are hundreds of thousands per per annum. So again, we're just pointing out the magnitude, and based on the fact that this is 13, 13 million pound market capitalization, 
I think you'd agree, Oliver, that if any one of these comes in, this share price is going to be many, many, many factors of what it is now. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I can't comment too directly on share price, but what I can say is, you know, as someone who's been around this industry my whole career, uh, and knowing what these things can ultimately be worth, you know, all I'm going to do is continue to focus on adding value. You know, like with today's RNS, maybe the share price doesn't move, maybe it does. I know value has been added because it gets us closer to our goal. So I'm going to continue to add value at Pilot Mountain, at Garfield, doing the right methodical exploration development, doing the things that I know are going to continue to push it up that curve. The market will take note. They're starting to take note. You know, I'm not going to say we're undervalued or overvalued. I, you know, I we've added a lot of value and we're going to continue to do that. And the market will have to take note at some point here. And that's all. That's, not, that's what I'm going to do. Just continue to, to execute as a CEO and, and add value across the portfolio. That's, that's what I'm here to do. Very good. Okay. Well, we look forward to welcoming you back on in future. And I'll say Oliver Friesen, CEO of Golden Metal Resources. Thanks very much for your time. Yeah. Thanks, gents. This podcast was brought to you by Roast PR Limited. If you would like to appear on a future episode of The Sunday Roast, please email admin at thesundayroast.net.